Hey everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today I want to take you around the 800 gallon tank, show you all the equipment and all the stuff that I've been meaning to do that I haven't done. Of course we'll take a look at the fish too, but you know, I just, I want to get this video done before I forget it's been five years and you guys still don't know what my filtration is and all that kind of stuff. So here we go. So to start it off, we've got an 800 gallon tank. It's eight feet long, left to right. Well, left to right. Uh, it's 40 inches tall, so it is much taller than any of us are, and it's a very deep aquarium. And then front to back, we're at 4 feet as well. So it's got quite a lot. It doesn't look like that because my hand's right here, but if I put my hand at the edge, now you go, oh, that's your hand. Wait a second, that is deep. Uh, we wanted it so we had two viewing angles, so we have the long, like, you can watch fish swim towards you for 8 feet. That's super cool. And then also, you know, the watch them swim back and forth. And they will interact with you. I mean, they, they love to follow us as we're doing stuff. And you bring this whole giant school of 300 plus tiger barbs, plus all the clown loaches that like to school in with them. You can bring them down to the other side of the aquarium with you if you want. And uh, really play with them. And that's the goal we're going for. So, uh, right now they're swimming against a big current. We have the max spec like, gyre pump. That's an 8,000 gallon per hour pump. It's really whipping the water. And that's why all the plants are like doing this angle instead of going up, they're doing that because that water really whips through here and gives them a current and that's running on its own timer. So it runs for about six hours a day at that strength and it ramps up and ramps down. It's a $500 unit and truth be told, I would never buy this big of one again. I think I'd be much better off with one of the mid or even the smallest unit because this water is really whipping around in here and I don't even run it to 100%. So I think I could uh, do without it if I needed to or not without it, but with a much cheaper one. But everyone told me, buy the big one, it's an 800 gallon, you fool. And I listened to that hype, and now I'm kind of like, well, yeah, I guess. Uh, you know, so there's that. For heating, we're running a couple of the Fluval LED electronic 300 watt heaters. Right now they're showing blue, because it's a little bit cold. I've been doing extra water changes, and the water change water comes in at 78. And uh, so I bumped that up to 80, and hopefully they'll be able to finish heating it up to 82. Um, we've got two wild clown loaches that came in at about a foot and they're very large and they keep digging in here because they're wild caught and they want to hide out. They're not used to being in an aquarium yet. So uh, it's created a lot of debris up in the water column, but you know, it's, there's a lot of debris no matter what. We feed a ton. Speaking of feeding, we have an auto water change system up here. And, or not auto water change, an auto feeder up here. This is like a, I'll show you the company, but the company is hard to deal with and that's why I never really promote them is like, I think it's like Super Dragon or something like that. Um, and they're hard to find online. They're like a hundred bucks or maybe 70 bucks. I don't know, they're up there. They're, they're not cheap. And they're, they're kind of clunky. You gotta hook them to a timer and all that. They're made to be like for a commercial unit, not for this. But they do work pretty good, I'll give it that. Uh, and then we've got, for feeding the plants, we have an auto doser. This is the Jabo auto doser with a gallon of Easy Green and a gallon of Easy Iron. And uh, I've been traveling so much lately that I was running into algae problems, and you can see here all the new growth, like on the Val, nice and green and lush. The old growth got algae on it, and same with a lot of these crypts. If you come down here and you look, you go, oh, yeah, that new growth looks great. Oh, yeah, you get a lot of algae on the other stuff, and it was because we were not consistently dosing, and because we water change every day, we want the fertilizers to go in every day. And so the plants are looking a lot better, at least all the centers of them where all the new growth is coming through looks wicked good, and we're going to, you know, we're turning that tide. And uh, yeah, so that's just some of the equipment. We do run an air stone in here, and it's mostly to break up protein films and make sure I have adequate oxygen. Uh, you can see here we have uh, reticulated hillstream loaches doing some work on the algae. And in the back, we have that green is a python hook. So if we go to the back of this thing, it's all wires and, and pipes and things like that. But you can see there that, that green one is where the water comes in. All the rest is filtration which we'll take a look at right now, and then we'll go on to uh, feeding them and that type of stuff. So uh, I've never really, I got to take some panels off, like we've got the logo here, powered by Fluval. Oh yeah, powered by Fluval. Uh, we do use their lights. They did donate these lights, and they didn't send me what I think I needed. They actually only sent me four uh, three-footers, and so I ended up swapping them out to four-footers and that kind of stuff, but three of those lights, three four-foot Fluval 2.0s, lights this 800 gallon aquarium, which I am shocked. I thought I was gonna need like six four footers to even have a chance, you know, kind of like three rows of eight feet long. 
and here I am doing it with half as much, so I've never changed it, and the plants are growing well, and I still get like 15 par at the substrate level, which is plenty fine for all these like low light plants that I'm using anyway, low to medium light plants. And so I'm really impressed with how well the Fluval 2.0s work. I mean, obviously I sell them, but you can buy them anywhere. And uh, it's one of my most recommended lights. You can check out reviews and that kind of stuff on it. But um, yeah, let me get some panels open here so we can take a look down underneath. All right, so I know this is a mess of wires and it's all clustered up, but we had to redo the plumbing when we redid the studio on the other side, so bear with me. But uh, where do I start here? I think, well, I start where the water goes, right? So the water comes in from this intake right up here, which I desperately need a white uh, cap and a coupler there so it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb. But water comes in from there, and then where does it go? It comes outside the tank, and it comes to this unit right here. This is a, a PF4000 from Laguna. It's meant, quote unquote, to be for a 4,000 gallon pond. And let me explain what it does, what I like about it. So one, it's big. That's an FX6 right there. So they're at the same, well, actually that, the bricks are a little bit lower, but you can see it's, it's like twice as big as an FX6. So the water comes into here and it's basically filled with sponges. Now. It also has a 36 watt UV sterilizer in it, which is nice. You know, that keeps me from having green water and it can help fight off some parasites if I ever need to do that. I also would have to unplug it if I was doing anything with medicines or anything like that. But uh, what's nice is it's got this valve right here. So if I want to do a manual water change, all I have to do, even though water changes are automatic and come down into this pipe, um, all I have to do is flip this. Water is now flowing. I turn it back. Water's now coming back to the tank, so that's really nice. And then over here, these handles clean this. So there's big rakers in there that go up and down the sponges, and it's, it's half the unit. You pull that up and down, and that cleans all the sponge and sends the gunk out the system. So you kind of turn it, and then you start pumping this. And we'll probably see, if I pump well enough, we'll probably start seeing it turn black. I mean, I clean this fairly often, so, you know, we can back flush it. It is more brown. I don't know if you can tell that on, you know, camera or not, but yeah, you just keep doing that. And we'll let that clear out for a second. So that's, that's the pre-filter. All right. So let's think about that. That is, all the water comes in out of the tank, comes right down to here. This is our first form of filtration. Basically, we wanna catch as much stuff as we can in here, all right? So we catch it all there. We can real easily back flush it and flip that switch, pump all the water out. Works out really well. From there, we can see that it goes out right here, so this is the out. You flip it that way, it goes out of the building. You flip it that way, it goes to the next filter. It comes around into the FX6. The FX6 is actually what's powering this whole tank for the most part. So gravity feeds water into here. Then the FX6, gravity feed, that's why this had to be a little bit higher. So you see how there's a little bit of an angle there. Uh, gravity then feeds this the FX6 does its filtering and it's got, you know, bio rings and sponge and stuff like that in it, like you would normally would. Then the pump itself pumps this water back, but not to the tank. The tank, or the, the next filter is up here. And let me get a better angle for you guys. I'm stuck. But that is a above tank sump that's filled with bio balls and a fine polishing pad, right? And we've got air up there as well, just to make sure we can keep, so uh, we can keep a little bit of auction going up there because we, there's a, okay, let me back that up. There's a chance without testing that water coming into that intake, going through that, then through that, and then up to that, technically like that FX6 could turn into anaerobic bacteria because there's not enough oxygen after getting from there. So that might be digesting nitrates. So I just like to make sure that before the water returns to the tank, we're aerating it. So we've got that spun or that um, air stone up there. So 
So that's that system, but then we also have another system. So we have the overflow when we're auto changing water. And from there, what happens is water comes up, comes down over here, down this pipe, gets to this fine filter pad, comes down into this 275 gallon sump that shares um, the water with this turtle. There's a, uh, an albino red-eared slider named Pineapple, shedding some of its scoots. Um, and it comes up here and lives and does its thing. And we also run the dehumidifier in here. So all that's going on and uh, the water, water change water comes into here, but then it leaves here through the building. So it's all integrated in. And normally I run a pump to run this back over to here. Oops, sorry. Uh, but it's a little bit loud and we need to redesign this. Eventually we think we're gonna put a pond over here uh, to house this turtle with a bunch of filter socks and run it really quiet. So that's why we haven't done much with that yet. And that's why this is kind of hokey with this dehumidifier. We don't even need the dehumidifier anymore. So that's super cool that we're not running as many tanks. We don't have to run a dehumidifier. We're stoked about that, gonna save some power. Uh, and then we can take a look at the stand or the storage capability down here. You can see I've got some stuff down there and we've got like a TV box, but this is all two inch tubular steel and with adjustable feet. And there's like something like 12 feet on here. And if we come over to here, whew, so there's 12 feet. You can see one, two, three, and four, and there's three rows. And it's got the plywood deck. And we right now we're storing a piece of glass and that kind of big bulky items. But uh, the cool thing is, is all of these panels are attached by magnets. So you can see right here and right here. And so when you go to put them away, usually you have two hands. So it's a lot easier than what I'm about to do. But you just get it on this bottom cleat and uh, it's just gonna snap into place. And there you go, panels back on, gives you that clean look. And you can get down to any of these and the stand could be wide open, but I wanted to make sure that we could close it off for filming and doing all that kind of stuff and sound deadening. And, and uh, the side is one big panel. So the panel goes from here all the way to the back and that's what that panel is over there. And you can see one of the new bigger clown loaches right there, kind of a beast. And it, it doesn't look big until other fish go near it, but it runs for me because it's never seen a camera or really humans before because it's out of the wild. So I do feel bad about that, but you can see those are the small clown loaches and the tiger barbs next to this one foot monster. Um, and there's another one in there too. I got two, that was the minimum order. And uh, so yeah, let me grab some food and we'll feed these guys. So I'm gonna feed them some cichlid gold pellets. Now you guys have seen me feed them blood worms and all kinds of stuff a million times but this is the favorite food of the clouded archers. And it makes all the clown loaches and everything come feed off the top, which is kind of fun. And basically the tiger barbs are absolute pigs. And so they'll take all the food, but this seems to be big enough they can't get it all. So they got to kind of carry around that basketball. And so we'll put some in and we'll see, or I'll, I'll show you what they do. So it's kind of just a hoard or a mess. I guess I can get it from this side too. Normally we have the first feeding, we feed them three or four times a day. The first feeding goes off before the, um, the gyre pump kicks on. So it's not moving the food all around. But you can see all these loaches going up the top. Obviously the biggest newer loach has no idea. That's how you do feeding here. It's still stressed out. It just went in yesterday. Uh, but the rest of these guys know what's up. They're going, hey, all the food's over here now. And so you get these this big, massive schools of fish moving around. I'm gonna to move to the other angle here. And so, yeah, the water obviously cloudy at this point because we back flushed that filter and you know, we're feeding a bunch and those big guys are going, but you know, normally it's not so bad, but we are, it's a constant battle and maybe we gotta to run to 50 micron socks, but they're gonna clog up so fast with, you know, we put pounds of food in a day um, I haven't found a good way to get super crystal clear water quality. And I've talked to people that run public aquariums and that type of thing. And they're like, honestly, it's probably better just to have a little bit of cloudiness going on. Like today is excessive because I showed you how the filter works and all that. It's got to recollect that stuff. I mean, you guys have done that. You've cleaned your aquarium and you go, why does it look dirty? Well, I just cleaned it. Give it an hour. It cleans back up. But, oh, is this one going to learn to eat? Maybe you guys watch him learn to eat on camera here. He's coming up to the top, he knows, he or she knows there's food in there. Not quite, not quite, you know, 
uh, outgoing enough, I think, to uh, make that happen yet. But yeah, this is where we like to hang out and just kick back. And uh, you know, you've probably seen it on the live streams. But yeah, that's the 800 gallon aquarium. If you guys have any other questions, if I missed anything, I don't think so. It's a pretty basic setup, you know, for a larger aquarium setup. And uh, to all the people that are like, you should do this or you should do that. I've looked into a lot of options. I've done a lot of things and, you know, possibly a bead filter, possibly, but they tend to be very loud. And right before we were doing, we were using this room for filming and you can't have very loud and filming go on. So now that we're not filming in this room, that does open up that as a possibility, but I still think the pond with like, I want to do something like 36 50 micron socks uh, should last me four or five days before they clog up and I have to swap them out. So that's my, my goal on that. But we'll see because I haven't built it yet and we've got a few other projects to do between now and then, like setting up the rest of that fish room. So for now, uh, you know, those have to live with a little bit cloudy water, but water parameters are super good because we do, you know, change hundreds of gallons every day. And uh, yeah, so, all right guys, that's the 800 gallon, that's the equipment. Hopefully you guys, you know, understand how it works and you know, enjoy it. And uh, I'm happy to make another video for you guys. So we'll see you next time.